Today we're working on a Sega Game Gear, and this will actually be the first Game Gear that I ever work on. I briefly introduced this guy in the last video. It was one of three Game Gears that were donated to the channel, one of which I'll be completely fixing up and giving it away to a lucky subscriber. We could test the system using batteries, but I'm just gonna borrow the power supply from my Genesis Model 2. This is the MK2103 power adapter, otherwise known as the yellow tip power adapter. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in. Plugged in and turn the system on. So just garbled lines on the screen. And let's see if there's any audio that's already on full volume. Let's try another cartridge just for the sake of testing it a little bit more thoroughly and we get the exact same symptoms. At first glance, the system's not loading games from cartridge. We're not getting any audio on the internal speaker. There's also black and white lines across the screen. So this system could very well have a faulty LCD screen as well. The challenge with pinpointing the exact issue with a faulty Game Gear is that they're known to have bad capacitors. The systems are already 30 years old and they apparently didn't have very high quality capacitors to begin with. So before I go chasing my tail trying to figure out what might be wrong with the system, we need to establish a baseline by replacing all the capacitors in the system first. So that's gonna be the task ahead of us today. I've already gone ahead and purchased a capacitor kit for the system from console five. There are a couple of different variants of the Game Gear and I've already opened this one up and determined that it is a VA1 and you need to make sure that you get the capacitor kit for the Game Gear that you have. Console five makes these capacitor diagrams freely available on their wiki page. I've gone ahead and printed this out for the Game Gear version that I have just to help me stay organized given that it's my first time replacing capacitors in this system. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. Now we'll be doing a case swap on the system so I'm not concerned about the missing battery door. Let's go ahead and remove the second one. And we have six screws on the back and we have one game bit screw. Let's carefully open it up and we have a few cables that we need to disconnect. Okay, that's the two halves separated. Let's go ahead and extract the motherboard. And it's out. Wow, we have a lot of corrosion actually. This board's gonna need a recap and a very thorough cleaning. So let's set this guy aside. And let's go ahead and extract the soundboard and the power board. and the power board is out. I think I'm gonna start out with just the soldering iron and if I'm having too much trouble, I might take out the hot air as well. And these capacitors can be a little bit deceptive. You'd look at that and you'd think it was some sort of ceramic cap, but it is quite literally a through hole cap in a plastic housing that is surface mounted to the board. Now, before we start, I think we're gonna have to break the adhesive that's gluing this housing down to the board. So I'm gonna crack this plastic and we can see how the housing is still glued down to the board. So maybe I'll just do that with all of them before we start. And the last one right here. It's already beginning to smell like fish. This smells exactly like recapping an NES. Okay, 
just so folks aren't confused, here you can actually see what we have is just a regular electrolytic cap in a plastic housing. So we're gonna to have to go back and remove the remnants of these plastic enclosures, but the important thing is that we do our best to maintain the integrity of the pads. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the caps in pretty much the same way. That actually went a lot better than I was expecting, and I'm hoping that was the hard part. Now, the power board just has through hole caps, so it should be easier. And it's out. Just completely flood this guy as well. And it's out. And this one is the big power cap. And it's out. All right, last but not least, the soundboard. And we are done removing the caps. And as nasty as this looks right now, especially with all the corrosion, I think it's gonna clean up really well. All right guys, well, I just tested every capacitor on the system and almost every single one of them is out of spec. I'm actually quite surprised that this many are damaged. We have a 47 that's reading 100. We have a 100 that's reading 136. We have a 10 that's reading 144. A bunch down here as well that I've labeled with X's just couldn't get a reading off of them at all. This is a systemic issue for Game Gears and you pretty much always have to recap the system, but. Um, this just goes to show that even with the example that I have here, almost every single one of these capacitors is either dead or completely off the mark. I think I'm going to change the soldering iron tip and use the knife tip just to deliver a little bit more heat to the board. Fun time officially begins.
we're done guys. Time to clean the workbench up and test this thing out, see how we did. This is now the most nerve wracking and exciting part of any project. And that's testing everything out. All right, let's get you guys in close. I think they actually turned out really well. Joints look good. So let's just minimally put this thing in its housing and just see if we get an image and sound out of the console. Just install a single case screw. All right, need a game. Well, it's working, but the screen is faulty. Let me turn off the light so you guys can see. I'm not sure if there's anything we can do about that. I really thought I was moments away from having my first fully repaired and restored Game Gear, but unfortunately that's to be expected with these systems. Almost all of them end up having capacitor issues and a good number of them turn out to have faulty displays as well. The good news is that there's a ton of aftermarket options for upgrading the screen. So this unit will be a perfect candidate for that and you guys will probably still see the system again. I'm still really proud of the work that I did on the system. It's a bit of a tricky system to recap. I feel even more confident to work on the next one. And having said that, this will not be the giveaway Game Gear. We'll recap the next system. Hopefully it has a good screen. If not, we'll do the third one. And if all of them have bad screens, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.